My name is Greg Cronholm. I'm with the Texas Agriculture Extension Service, and we're here today to show you uh, the type of damage caused by the western corn rootworm larvae feeding on young corn plants. In order to be able to see this damage, you need to be able to wash these roots in a bucket of water, and uh, if you have a high pressure hose, that's even better. But once you've washed, you'll be able to see this damage, which has occurred from the western corn rootworm. This damage on the corn root is very typical of that caused by the western corn rootworm larvae are the Mexican corn rootworm larvae. They often will feed or tunnel in the roots as they're growing out, and you will see these pruned roots here, and often they will prune it all the way back to the node. And in severe cases, they will completely eat off a node or several nodes all the way down to the very apex of the root. Since corn on the high plains is usually well irrigated, it has access to good moisture levels. And when we have this, we get what we call root regrowth, uh, where the rootworms have damaged the root. And that's what all this root proliferation is here in this root mass. And uh, under light rootworm infestations, this usually doesn't affect uh, uh, yield at all. But this is an indicator that they did have uh, fairly heavy damage earlier but with the irrigation, the roots were able to regrow. This is uh, typical damage that we see from fairly heavy infestations of uh, feeding by the western corn rootworm larvae. We will get the plant uh, falling over, and then as it tries to regrow, we'll get this uh, goosenecking. Initially, uh, the plant uh, falls over, but after we have some irrigation water, it will uh, initiate some of the brace roots here to prop the plant up, and then it will begin to grow again. And uh, the only problem we have with this gooseneck corn is at harvest time, and uh, being able to line up the uh, combine appropriately on the rows is sometimes a headache for the grower. It causes us to have to harvest the corn at a much slower speed than we normally would. So this is uh, one problem uh, that we see from damage by the western corn rootworm. The uh, western corn rootworm beetle emerges from the soil uh, this time of year and begins to feed on the foliage of the plant. Once the tassels emerge, they will move to the tassels to feed and then within a day or so we have silks on the plants and then they will move to the uh, silks to feed on those. Uh, typically it takes a large number of beetles to cause any significant uh, silk pruning. We generally think of eight to ten beetles per plant as being a threshold for causing damage or potential damage uh, to pollination of the uh, corn. Once these beetles have been out here for a period of time, they will mate. The females will move to cracks in the soil. They'll lay eggs in the soil, and then those eggs will overwinter. The following spring, these eggs will hatch based on uh, heat unit accumulation and presence of corn. The larvae will begin to feed on the root system of the small corn, and then again, they will pupate in the soil. The adults will begin to emerge. Usually we see them around June 20th on the high plains of uh, Texas. And as we move farther north uh, into the Amarillo area, we will see emergence uh, somewhat later than what we have in the southern high plains. What we have here is damage caused by the adult feeding on the foliage uh, after it emerges from the soil. These rootworms will uh, move to the whorl area and then they will begin to feed on the surface of the leaf, and we call this scarification of the leaf. It sometimes looks like some other insect damage, like that of fall armyworm or southwestern corn borer or either European corn borer, but once you uh, have seen this damage versus that caused by the southwestern corn borer, you'll be able to recognize the difference in these two types of uh, feeding damage. These leaves here are to show you the difference between western corn rootworm foliage feeding and that caused by the southwestern corn borer. 
This leaf shows the scarification caused by the western corn rootworm adult feeding. It can sometimes look like that caused by the southwestern corn borer. These small areas here were caused by the larvae as the leaf was unrolling in the world. But again, you get these longitudinal uh, areas in the leaf surface that if you hold them up to the light, you'll see that they are just uh, one layer of cells thick. As the plant progresses and grows, these areas will fall out, leaving uh, uh, blank areas in the leaf surface. Again, this was caused by southwestern corn borer. That caused by the western corn rootworm tends to stay there on the leaf, dries up, and then falls out at a much later date in the season.